Second Baruch chapter 39, we're going to read 1 through 4 in the, in the Sefer. Second Baruch chapter 39, 1 through 4, and it reads, And he answered and said unto me, Baruch, this is the interpretation of the vision which you have seen, as you have seen the great forest which lofty and rugged mountains surround it. This is the world. Behold, the days come, and this kingdom will be destroyed, which once destroyed Zion. And it will be subjected to that which comes after it. Moreover, that also again after a time will be destroyed, and another, a third, will arise. He's talking about the same beast Daniel's talking about. And also, and that also will have dominion for its time and will be destroyed. And after these things, a fourth kingdom will arise. Now he's talking about what Ezra's is talking about. And Ezra's is talking about what Daniel is talking about. It says, whose power will be harsh and evil far beyond those which were before it. And it will rule many times as the forest on the plain. And it will hold fast for times. You know how thick a forest is when you see it? That's how this beast is likened to. And will exalt itself more than the cedars of Lebanon. And by it, the truth will be hidden. And all those who are polluted with iniquity will flee to it as evil beasts flee and creep into the forest. So all these nations being mingled are fleeing to wickedness because it's in there. It's inherited in them to follow evil. That's why he said this. The next world is made for few and this world is made for many to perish because all these people are seeking the evil. It's a trip, huh? When you look at it through the human eyes, you see the immigrants flowing to this country from all nations because it's like a giant forest and they're all running to hide under this wickedness. And it will come to pass when the time of its consummation that it should fall has approached, then the principate of my Hamashiach will be revealed. It's amazing because when you look at the principality of the immigrants running here from all nations, like the Most High gave that example, like an insect running to the forest, or like an evil beast fleeing into the forest. You look at these people fleeing in here and think about it. Who are the only people brought here against their will? It's us. We have to be the Israelites. Who are the people here that own this land before it was destroyed? Those are the Israelites too. It makes perfect sense through the scriptures. And all the people fleeing here are fleeing here because they want a part of the evil. Not because they have sorrow for us being here. Not because they have sorrow for us being in captivity. They don't want us to have anything. Because it's set up that way. They want us to be like them. Wicked. It says, which is like the fountain and the vine. And when it is revealed, it will root out the multitude of its hosts. Verse 8. And as touching that which you have seen, the lofty cedar, which was left of that forest, and the fact that the vine spoke those words with it, which you did hear. This is the word. Interesting. Let's go to Joel. The book of Joel. Because Joel is a part of the prophecy too. All this stuff link up together. Joel. And we're going to go to chapter 3 of Joel. Because when the Mosai take out this place, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to bring us back to Israel. And he's going to judge the nations because he said that everything's going to be refreshed. But for things to be refreshed, the first thing that has to happen is an overthrow. You got to overthrow the wicked kingdom before the new kingdom can reign. Think about it. When a kingdom takes over another kingdom, for example, we saw Babylon and Persia. What is the first thing that they have to do? They have to fight. They have to bring down the walls of another kingdom. Then when they bring down the walls, what do they have to do? 
they have to arrest the noblemen. And if they can, the first thing they have to do after arresting the noblemen is find when you watch these movies, that's what they do. They never kill the king. Remember what Saul? The Most High said to kill the king. He wanted Saul a king to kill another king of the Amal Amalekites. And Saul didn't do it. Remember that? And so the Amalekites' sons were the nobles that were arrested around the king of the Amalekites. The prophet had to come in to slay the king, which was out of order. The king is supposed to slay the king. That's why the Most High was so angry with him. But that's not going to happen in this next kingdom. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in the days, in those days, and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down unto the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. We were the only ones scattered amongst the nations. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for war, wine that they might drink. And this is hilarious because George Washington did this very thing. If you brought it up on your Internet right now. George Washington sells slave boys to wine, a huge basket of wine. This is what they did. Verse 4, Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre, the Africans, and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? And you render me a recompense? If you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? And he's going to bring payback on them. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried unto your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold, the Africans sold us to the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border and put us on slave ships. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabines, to a people far off, for the Most High have spoken it. So that hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruner hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. I just say, let the weak say they are strong because they are weak. Remember, this is a weaker nation, too. He said, with time, it gets weaker. For, right? They're weak now. Beat your plowshares in the swords and your pruner hooks in the spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O power. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Y'all want to fight? Come on. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Right. Israel are not heathens. We know who the heathens are to other nations. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Most High is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now the sun and the moon represents knowledge and wisdom, and the stars of Esau will fall. The stars of Esau will fall. So they're going to be without knowledge and without wisdom when they come to this fight. Most I just going to destroy them. It's, going to be fight. it's like fighting a drunk man. Let's go back to Second Baruch. So in the Valley of Decision, they're going to have their call, and the Most High is going to deal with them. See that? So Joel is putting prophecy out there too, 
All this is like a hand of love. It's all fitting piecemeal by piecemeal. Second Baruch chapter 40, and we're going to read this whole chapter. It's only four verses. Second Baruch chapter 40. The last leader of that time will be left alive. See that? Remember what I said about the kings? The last leader. So who, whatever president is ruling during that time is going to be left alive. You know, Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yoshai is not going to fight no woman. It's going to be a man. So whoever's ruling in this last days of this kingdom is going to be a man. The last leader of that time will be left alive where the multitude of the host will be put to the sword and he will be bound and they will take him up to Mount Zion. See that? In the Valley of Decision. And my Mashiach will convict him of all his impotence and will gather and set before him all the works of his host, meaning his clergy, his senators, his congressmen. So what president is this going to be? That should wipe out of your mind right there. It ain't going to be Camilla Harris. And afterward, he will put him to death and protect the rest of my people, which shall be found in the place which I have chosen. And his principate will stand forever until the world of corruption is at an end and that the times aforesaid are fulfilled this is your vision and this is it interpretation so now you know that your house shall don't come if you ain't ready but i will say this also will he who is incorruptible despise those things which are corruptible Let's drop down and let's go to Second Baruch chapter 28, verse 3. So we see in the line, we saw the 12 parts. We saw which kingdom is going to be ruling. We saw that the kingdom of uh, the, the, the king of that beast or that kingdom is going to have to go before Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahushai to be slayed in front of the nations. And he's going to kill all the heathens that round about him. Second Baruch chapter 28, verse 3. Second Baruch chapter 28, verse 3. Those things that are corruptible. Certain said, verse 5, but if Yahweh, those things shall assuredly come to pass, which you have foretold to me, so do you show this also unto me, if indeed I have found grace in your sight. Is it in one place? Or in one of the parts of the earth that those things are come to pass? Or will the whole earth experience? This is the thing that I wanted to say to you guys. What we're seeing today, the whole earth is encompassed with this, these different plagues now. And so we're in the embodiment of what the 12th part is all about. The whole earth is encompassed because why? We are scattered all over the earth. Uh, Second Baruch chapter 29. Let's read this. One through three, where we took third verse. And he answered and said unto me, Whatsoever will then befall will befall the whole earth. Therefore, all who live will experience them. For at that time, I will protect only those who are found in those self same days in this land. And it shall come to pass when all is accomplished that was to come to pass in those parts that Hamashiach shall then begin to be revealed. And that's the time that we're living in now. And these last three parts, specifically the last two, Yahushua has been revealed throughout the whole earth. Everyone knows who Yahushua is and that he is an Israelite. Most people know that he's from Israel. Right? He's been revealed. But they don't know who. Let's jump over to Second Baruch chapter 41. Second Baruch, chapter 41 in the Sefer. So we're going to read this whole chapter. We're going to read the whole chapter of 42. All right. Second Baruch, chapter 41, verse 1. And I answered and said, For whom and for how many shall these things be? Or who will be worthy to live at that time? For I will speak before you everything that I think 
and I will ask of you regarding those things which I meditate. For lo, I see many of your people who have withdrawn from your covenant. All right? We see brothers and sisters who don't keep the covenant, who don't keep the commandments. And cast from them the yoke of your Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible. But others, again, I have seen who have forsaken their vanity and fled for refuge beneath your wings. What, therefore, will be to them? Or how will the last time receive them? Or perhaps, or perhaps the time of these will surely be weighed. And as the beam implies, will they be judged accordingly? Basically, all of those who woke up to the truth, we all fled for, for protection under his wings because we saw we was living in vanity. But all those who are not fleeing to the Most High, this is what's going to happen to them. I'm going to read chapter 42. And he answered and said unto me, These things also will I show unto you. As for what you said, to whom will these things be? And how many will they be? To those who have believed, there shall be the good which was spoken of aforetime. And those who despise, there shall be the contrary of these things. And as for what you said regarding those who have drawn near and those who have withdrawn, this is the word. As for those who were before subject and afterwards withdrew and mingled themselves with the seed of mingled peoples. The time of these was the former and was accounted as something exalted. What does he mean by counting being mingled something exalted? Because in this captivity, a lot of brothers and sisters believe that if you get with a Edomite, you're exalted more than a brother who gets with one of his own. It's like a class. It's like a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a class bracket, an upper class, upper echelon bracket. Well, I'm married to an Edomite. You can see that. You go to China, you go to Africa, you see the sisters, they'll get with a, a Edomite man. And they, if they think that they're better than their own because they're with the Edomite man. Same thing in China or Japan. You go to the Edomite man, they look down on their people. And so for this particular time, people are exalted because of that. But there's going to be a time when they're not going to be exalted for doing that. Look at verse 5. And as for those who before knew not, but afterwards knew life, and mingled only with the seed of the people which had separated itself, the time of these is the latter. All right, so we separate ourselves with our people. There's another scripture in there. Is everyone will flee to their own people in the last days. And those who do not flee with their own people will be thrust through with the sword who cleave to the heathen. Uh, let's go back. Second Baruch chapter 42 and 6. And time shall succeed to, to time and season to, and to season, and one shall receive from another. And then, with a view to the consummation, shall everything be compared according to the measure of the times and the hours of the seasons. For corruption shall take those that belong to it, and life those that belong to it. And the dust shall be called, and there shall be said to it, Give back that which is not yours, and raise up all that you have kept until it's time. What does that mean? When it says, and the death shall be called. If you died in the spirit, kept the commandments, the Most High is going to say, let those who belong to me come out of the dust. Remains is not going to be able to hold you. He's going to make a separation of the dust. And the people that belong to him are going to come back to life again. It's pretty heavy. Ezra talks about that too. Look at um, Second Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter uh, seven, verse thirty-two. Second Ezra chapter seven, verse thirty-two. Right here it says, "And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her." See that? So the dust is just—it's like it's going to put you back together, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, what happens to a body? It decays into nothing. All you find is bones. 
but the dust is going to come back together. That's why I'll be saying to brothers, a lot of times uh, it's good that we get buried in our whole body because it's customary. But what about the brothers who have families who don't believe in their truth and they only have so much money and they cremate the brothers and sisters? What happens to them? Well, the Most High is going to bring all that dust together. They're doing the same thing with DNA right now. Like um, I had mentioned before in one of our classes that the government asked for uh, permission of Tupac Shakur's mother to allow them to have one of his dental records or uh, some of his teeth so they could use the DNA to bring them back. They're doing that with the dinosaurs. They're trying to bring them back based on DNA, a tooth or, or a strand of a bone or something. Bring back whatever, you know. And so the Most High is the ultimate creator. He could put all that dust back together and bring you back. Okay. Um, where are we at? Uh, verse 32. And the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her, and so shall the dust those that dwell in silence. And the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. That's when you read Revelation chapter 12 or 20 and 12. That's what he's talking about. Um, when the Mosai gives that order, everything is going to come back the way it was. It's like it's, like it's going to go in reverse. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Uh, it started at 11. Revelation 20 and 11. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before the Most High, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea, here it is, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and the death and, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death so when he gives that decree everything is going to come back all the bodies are going to be recreated come back the way they were all right on judgment day those who have works will not be judged those who don't have works are going to be judged into everlasting fire and condemnation. So that's what Baruch is talking about. That's what Daniel is talking about. Let's go to Daniel. Let's look at Daniel chapter 7. Uh, ja Daniel chapter 12. Daniel talks about the same thing. This is the mystery. So this is the resurrection. Unless I could do anything. Uh, the book of Daniel. Look at 12 and Daniel 12 and verse. Yeah, let's start at verse 1. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, talking about the 12th part. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. See that? Some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. See that? Then he tells Daniel to shut the book up because he's going too deep. So go back to 2 Baruch chapter 42 and let's read verse 8 again. So he's telling us what's going to happen when resurrection happens. 2 Baruch chapter 42 verse 8 and it reads, And the dust shall be called whatever he's going to say i don't know what the word is some hebrew word he's going to call it 
and boom, everything is going to go back the way it was. And the dust shall be called, and there shall be said to it, Give back that which is not yours, and raise up all that you have kept until it's time. And give back, give me back my people, those who believed in me. The dust is going. I mean, all it takes is one little word. Like he said, peace be still, and the storm stop. You ain't gonna have to say much. He created everything. All right, let's go to um, what else do I want? I mean, we could go on and on with this, man. Yeah, let's go to chapter 49, and we're gonna read to the end of chapter 50. And 49 is three verses, and chapter 50 is four verses. We're gonna read this, and we're gonna end with this. All right, and so uh, Second Baruch chapter 49, it reads, Nevertheless, I will again ask from you, O my power, Yahweh. Yea, I will ask mercy from him who made all things. In what shape will those live? In what shape will those live who live in your day? Or how will the splendor of those who are after that time continue? He, I mean, it's a, rev it's a relevant question. He wants to know if we're going to look like the Hulk when we come back. Or are we going to look like ourselves? Baruch says this. Will they then resume this form of the present and put on these in trammeling members which are now involved in evils and in which evils are consummated or will you perchance change these things which have been in the world as also the world and he answered and said unto me hear baruch this word and write in the remembrance of your heart all that you shall learn for the earth shall then assuredly restore the dead which it now receives in order to preserve them. It shall make no change in their form. See, that going to be the same way. But as it has received, so shall it restore them. And as I delivered them unto it, so also shall it raise them. I mean, you're not going to be looking like, you know, like a rag, rag -a doll or rag -a muffin where you're going to have some eat of my arm and didn't have the rest of your body, <laughs> you're going to come back the same way you looked. But you will be in your most splendid form. You know, you're not going to look like Frankenstein when we come back. Verse 3, For then it will be necessary to show to the living that the dead have come to life again, and that those who had departed have returned again. And this shall come to pass when they have severely recognized those whom they now know, then judgment shall grow strong, and those things which before were spoken of shall come. All right, that with that right there, he's telling you that our loved ones are going to recognize us again. Okay, and there's going to be people who are going to live into the next life, they're going to die and be reborn too. But he's going to bring people out the dust, too. And they're going to see their loved ones and remember their loved ones. And we're going to come back with the same thing. But the earth is going to put us together after the words are spoken. I would love to just witness that, just to see it, you know, just stand above and watch the people be reformed. That would be great. Oh, my gosh. Mm -mm -mm. And with that, I'm going to end this class. Um homework read philippians chapter 4 after this topic philippians chapter 4 all right are there any questions the lord of hosts i took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well i have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 